The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to the crowds, Amen, I say to you, among those born of women, there has been none greater than John the Baptist. Yet the least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. From the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffers violence, and the violent are taking it by force. All the prophets and the law prophesied up to the time of John. And if you are willing to accept it, he is Elijah, the one who is to come. Whoever has ears ought to hear. The Gospel of the Lord. Yeah, it's a, it's a tricky little gospel passage uh, that we have. Um, f- I try to, try to uh, make sense of it, say, back to front. Of course, when Jesus says, uh, you should, I guess, yeah, you should expect me to say that, because when Jesus says, whoever has ears ought to hear, this is what he's saying. He's saying, you, ha- you have to puzzle over what I've said. It's not, it's not easily grasped. Um, there's, uh, we have to give it attention and, and the like. So, yeah, so how do, how do we give this passage um, attention? I mean, just before this, uh, in Matthew's Gospel, uh, Jesus, uh, sorry, uh, the disciples of John the Baptist have come to Jesus, and they've asked him, John is saying, on behalf of John, are you the one who is to come? And then we see Jesus use this very language at the end. If you are willing to accept it, he is Elijah. John is Elijah, the one who is to come. So I don't know if there's like a, not exactly a difference of opinion, but whether or not the disciples of John the Baptist and Jesus are on the same page as it relates to the timeline, the sequence of of events and people. Um, so Jesus is giving this, okay, this is who John the Baptist is. So in a sense, his answer is, I'm not the one who is to come. If by the one who is to come, you mean Elijah. I'm not the Elijah guy. He's the Elijah guy. And if he's the Elijah guy, then I'm the Messiah. Right? But he doesn't, and he's not going to say that out loud, I think, for, for a couple of reasons. He's not going he's not gonna to give it the, the kind of direct... Um, explanation that I just gave it for any number of reasons. I mean, one is because yeah, Herod Antipas is himself trying to, make him, trying to make himself known as king of the Jews. So you say, I'm the Messiah, right? I'm the, I'm the king. Then you have some, some issues with some other people in the land that, that he does, he's, not, he's not ready to uh, act on right now, right? We know, what, we know the narrative of, of the New Testament, and, uh, and it unfolds I mean, largely according to Jesus' timeline, although there are, there are certain points where he's pulled up a, a kind of ahead of himself. And anyway, so this is, this is what's going on. Yeah, it's, uh, it's, the, it's, the, kingdom of, it's the kingdom of heaven. Uh, John the Baptist is the, uh, the precursor or the, or the forerunner. And now Jesus is the Messiah, and he's given, and he's given that response uh, to the disciples of John. And, you know, is that, again, what we need to, what we need to hear uh, today, we're, we're in this Advent season. As I say, you know, li- listen to any of the traditional Advent hymns. They're, they're, all sp- they're not just like, oh, yeah, Jesus, baby, great, and whatever. It's like they're all newborn king, right, newborn king. And have, have we grasped Jesus' kingship, or has his, has his kingship grasped us, right? Who, who's in charge? Who's calling the shots in our lives, Right. Who, who is it? is it? Is it still us, or is it Jesus, who is, as we anticipate, the newborn king of the Jews? Is it Jesus, the, the Lord of all creation, the rightful ruler of every human heart? Right? Who is calling the shots? And again, the push uh, for me today, whenever I kind of get into that particular space, is to, is to ask whether or not we're praying. Are we, how, how is it that we're going to submit ourselves to Christ, if not by, if not by prayer? What do I mean? By, by commu- not simply communication with him, but what is the shape of our relationship with Jesus? Going to come before him, our, our king, 
Gonna, are we going to stand in, stand in his presence and give him our demands? Tell him, tell him the way that we think the world should be. His world, by the way. We're going to tell him the way that the world should be, the way that our life should be. We're going to just simply ask him for what it is we think we, we want according to our plan and our agenda. Or are we, going, are we going to come prostrate before him? Are we going to take up that position of docility, humility before Jesus? Who is, who is the king? Are we going to submit ourselves to him? And in submitting ourselves to him and, and giving ourselves over to him to advance his rule to every corner of our hearts and his creation, now are we, now are we seeking his beneficence? Are we seeking his providential care of us so that we can act, enact the plan that, uh, that is his and that he has called us to? Right? We want him to equip us for the task that he's, that he's given to us, right? We're, which way around is it? And has this, this is a revolution, right, that happens in the scriptures. There. It's, a, it's a turning around of things in order to get in line with what Jesus is doing. Is that happening this Advent season? Well, we're, probably at the, we're probably at the halfway point. Advent's always hard to track that way, but I, we're, we're at the halfway point of, of Advent. Is it, is it happening? Is that revolution being affected? Right? And, and whether it's like, it, you know, sometimes it's, sometimes it's confusing, sometimes, sometimes we're going, we're, we're taking the next step una, unaware of really what Jesus is asking us to do, but are, are we doing it? Right? And, and this, this Advent season gives us the opportunity to embrace Jesus precisely as our King. And uh, uh, are we finding then our, our yearning for His rule? Is that, is that, is that yearning growing in us? Are we more and more desperate for him and his way? And are we finding in this Advent season the power uh, from him to follow him where he's leading? Those are all things that for us should be happening. So we submit, we submit ourselves again, right? It's, it's, it's growing, right? Our yes is growing. Our submission to him is growing as we make our way through this Advent season. We're submitting ourselves to him again today and pledging ourselves to him that we will give ourselves today totally for him, totally for God's purposes. We're going to allow him to lead us, and we know that he's going to give us here the strength that we need uh, to follow him in faith today.